Uh, why wouldn't the NHL want to go to China in 2022? Um, number of reasons, um, not the least of which the IOC won't pay for them to go. They expect the NHL to pay $20, $20 million out of their own pocket for the costs associated for going to the Olympics. So, you know, if I said to you, I'm going to put you on an all-expense, not-paid vacation, <laughs> are you going to go? <laughs> so you're going to go to Club Med and <laughs> say, have those anymore? Um, and, and, you know, we're, we're inviting you here. Come on down. Right. Oh, and, and give me, give me 20000 please, for coming on this invitation holiday. Um, so, yeah, there's that part of it. And the, the secondary part of it is, and the owners have always felt this way, and, and it's, I don't want to say it's legit, because, listen, I, I loved the Olympics. Uh, the hockey at the Olympics in 2010 in Vancouver was the best I've ever seen. Um, I wasn't in Sochi in 14. Um, and that was a different one, too, because Canada in its own way, even though the scores were really tight, like Mike Babcock got Team Canada just to dominate that thing and dominate it in a really boring sort of, I'm going to win every game tight and it's gonna, we're going to play such stellar defense, nobody's going to touch us. And that's kind of the way it went. But I, I love the, I quote, I love quote unquote Olympic hockey with NHLers at it. But if I was an owner in the National Hockey League, I'd be doing exactly what they're doing. I, when Gary Bedman says we have zero interest in shutting down our season for three weeks, especially when, as you point out, especially when the Olympics are a world away. I mean, there's, there's, there's no tangible benefit. And yet there's a lot of people say, well, that, you know, there's a, an unbelievable revenue stream and whatever else. The NHL believes that there's never been any tangible proof that they profit from the Olympics. And they, and they like to use the 2002 Salt Lake City as a prime example. That was the dream gold medal game, Canada, United States, on American soil, in North America. And the National Hockey League maintained there was zero economic bump, um, no tangible measurement. Uh, and in fact, I think they would tell you that coming out of the Olympics afterwards, the NHL TV ratings go down. You know, you have the potential for injury of star players, John Tavares, amongst others. Um, it totally derailed the New York Islander playoff hopes that year. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so you're saying, so you show me the bottom line on why this is better for our business, and maybe we'll do it. And, oh, by the way, give us $20 million to go. I mean, the IOC makes it way too easy for the NHL to say, screw that. Yeah, well... I hope they commit to some sort of international hockey at some point. If it's not the Olympics, I mean, we all grew up with that, right? Like, you think of the history of this country, and I'm right. sure it applies in Russia, Sweden, Finland, and we still have the World Juniors and the World Hockey Championships, but those the juniors apply over here. It doesn't apply as much in Europe. World Championships apply in Europe. Don't apply as much over here. Um, I'd hate to, to think of Connor McDavid playing his whole career without a great yeah. Canadian moment. Right. You know, though, it's, it's funny um, because I've, I've gone full circle on this. Uh, originally, I, I was a huge booster of the old Canada Cup. And I understood its shortcomings. It was always in North America. It was always on North American ice. There was a built-in advantage for, obviously, for Canada. Um, the schedule was always stacked in Canada's favor. Um, but it was marvelous hockey. It just, just fantastic. And, and I love that. And then when the NHL said it was going to the Olympics... I was so anti NHL go to the Olympics because I what I loved about the the original Canada Cup was I mean they took it so damn serious. There was like a two three week training camp. There was this full full size tournament with you know oftentimes best of three final and and you know it was it was legit. It was this in my mind outside of the fact it was always on in Canada always. Um, and then to a lesser extent, some of the satellite games are in the U.S. It was always on North American. I, outside of those concerns, this for me was the legit best on best hockey you could, you could see. And, and then they said they're going to the Olympics, and I'm like, it's right in the middle of the season. It's going to be freeze-dried like freeze coffee. 
just add water, stir. You're going to get one or two practices. You're going to race everybody over there. You're going to play a bunch of games. It's going to be a one-game winner-take-all scenario, and you're going to come back less than two weeks later and right into the NHL season. And I, I was like, nah, that's no good. And and the funny thing is once once we got a taste of it and once 2010 was as good as it was, I went right the opposite way, and I'm like, I love this hockey. This is this is the way to do it. This is fantastic. And then when they brought the World Cup um, out of mothballs, and the, which is really you know just the, the Canada Cup with a new twist, um, I was like, ah, count me out for September hockey. Um, <laughs> not a chance in the world. And and my my give a you know what meter was on less than zero for the last World Cup. And and just the whole idea of, of playing the tournament in September and doing it the way they're doing it doesn't move my needle at all now that we've seen Olympic hockey. I don't and, ever remember being as jacked up as that 91 Canada Cup, I think, when Lindros was playing with Gretzky. Like, that oh, yeah. was... I was so fired up for that. It was incredible hockey. Yeah, yeah. it was It was crazy. I mean, the 87, the 87 Canada Cup... Was the was what I always said was the best until 2010 Olympics. It, it, in, in in my lifetime of covering and just watching hockey, internationally speaking, the zenith for the game being played at the highest level you could possibly imagine was that best of three six five six five six five series with the Soviets in the '87 Canada Cup, which of course was the Mario goal from Wayne and. Um, and then it was the golden goal by Sid in 2010. Those, those, and then obviously the, the other seminal moment was 1972, but for, um, it was, that was a much different format, and that was, that was still on a whole other level. But, um, you know, I love international hockey, but as I said, I've, I've come around on the whole Olympic thing, and, and yet I'm, I'm talking to both sides of my mouth because, if I, as I said, if I was an NHL owner or I, or I was Gary Bettman, I'd say, we're not going to the Olympics. Mm-hmm. I'm not paying $20 million to make the Olympics um, have the, the greatest hockey event ever. What are we getting out of it? Nothing. See you later. Buzz off. But as a fan, do I want them to go to the Olympics? Absolutely. 